Every single year, 50,000 students apply to medical school, but 60% of them get rejected. The reason? Most of them are applying to the wrong medical schools. So in today's video, we are going to look at what it means to apply strategically to medical school, the most important considerations to bear in mind, and how to maximize your chances of getting into medical school. Let's get started. One of the most fundamental pieces of advice that you may receive when you're applying to medical school is to apply strategically. In fact, it would be surprising if you haven't heard this already, but what does that even mean? Each medical school will place a different value and weighting on each element of the application. Academic grades, work experience, the UCAT score, and so on. An application can be considered strategic when you choose universities according to your strengths. Playing to your strengths will maximise your chances of getting an offer. Strengths can be based on the university's admissions criteria, selection process and course type. For example, if your predicted grades are on the lower end, then you would want to avoid applying to universities which place a lot of weight on them, such as Oxford and Cambridge. Actually, this is one of the reasons why I initially got rejected from medical school. If you want to hear more about my story and the lessons that I learned through that experience, then you can check out this video here. So how can you apply strategically? Well, you need to look out for the following factors. Minimum entry criteria, admissions tests, interviews, shortlisting, your preferences, and applying to medical schools with various difficulties. Let's explore each of those factors individually. Firstly, minimum entry criteria. The very first filter in your application should be making sure that you meet the minimum entry requirements for your chosen university. However, by ensuring that you do meet all of the minimum entry requirements for the university, you are maximizing your chances of proceeding to the next stage of the application process. At this stage, you will need to take the following into consideration. Your GCSE grades, your A-level results, your degree results if you have a degree, and any re-applicant policies. You should immediately exclude any university whose minimum entry criteria you do not meet. Minimum entry requirements are important because some universities, such as Cambridge, invite a high percentage of students to interview as long as they meet the criteria. Secondly, we have admissions tests. Admissions tests such as the UCAT or the GAMSAT are the next step in the process. Some universities release statistics of previous cohorts, including the scores that they achieved and how many of those secured offers. It is important to look at those statistics because it can give you a general idea of the scores that that university is looking for. The UCAT exam, for example, has a situational judgment section and some universities will have separate requirements for it, so it's good to pay attention to this too. Most universities won't accept a band four, but some universities may give you extra credit if you score a band one. Also, before applying to a university, make sure that you look at the admissions test that they require so that you sit the right one. Keep in mind that most universities now require the UCAT exam and some graduate entry applicants may also sit the GAMSAT exam. Number three is interviews. Although interviews might seem like they are far off into the future, it is a good idea to take them into consideration now. Universities use different interview styles to select candidates, including the multiple mini interviews or panel interviews. If you have a clear preference or feel like you will perform better in one type of interview as opposed to the other, think about excluding any universities that don't use your preferred style of interview. Number four is shortlisting. Shortlisting is the process that universities use to select candidates for the next stage in the application process. It is important to research this process so you know how you will be scored. This will help you to determine whether to apply to a certain university or not. Universities will usually rank your UCAT or your GAMSAT score, your academic background, your personal statement, and your work experience. Each university has its own way of evaluating different parts of the application. Some universities will put more weight on your GCSE grades as opposed to your A-levels and vice versa. 
So to choose universities strategically, you must play to your strengths. If you have a low UCAT score, for example, don't apply to a university that places a big emphasis on the UCAT exam. The shortlisting process information is generally available on university websites, and this will help you to identify which universities you should apply to. Number five is your preferences. As mentioned previously, you should always play to your strengths, but it's also important to choose a university that you will enjoy attending. This is especially true when applying to medicine, as you'll be spending four to six years there. In this sense, there are three things that you should consider when choosing a university. Number one is location. Choosing a location that you find appealing and that best supports your physical and your emotional well-being is essential. Visiting universities that you are thinking of applying to is a great idea as it will give you a feel for what that university is like. For example, a gym, the library, grocery stores, etc. Second is course type. There are four main types of medical courses, traditional, integrated, problem-based learning or case-based learning. Traditional courses focus on teaching the first two to three years without patient contact or any hospital or GP placements. Then during clinical years, students are placed in a clinical setting under the supervision of a superior. Integrated courses focus on teaching medicine by systems instead of by discipline. They try to combine anatomy and physiology, etc. into one. Integrated courses advocate early patient contact and can also include some problem-based learning. Problem or case-based learning is a relatively new way of teaching medicine that puts patients in the center of care. Students are exposed to patient contact early on in the course and learning is based on seminars, lectures and patient-based cases that students are expected to discuss and learn from. It is very important that you choose the course type that you think you will learn best from as this will help you to do really well throughout the course. And number three is current students' opinions. Taking a look at how current students feel and what they think of the university and the course that you are applying for can illustrate how you might feel when you are studying there. So it's a good idea to find this out. And finally, applying to a range of universities. Everyone has a dream university that they want to get into, which is great. However, some universities are incredibly competitive and can be really difficult to get into because they are popular among candidates. If that is the case, there is no harm in applying to that university. However, it is really important that you have some safety choices just in case things don't go as planned. In other words, try to include universities of various difficulties when choosing where to apply. Include hard, medium and easy universities in your choices. For example, don't apply to Cambridge, UCL, Edinburgh and Imperial. If Cambridge is your dream university, then by all means apply there, but make sure that you have at least one safer option and maybe one medium difficulty option too, to maximize your chances of receiving an offer. Strategic application is about aligning your strengths with the right medical school and understanding the landscape of medical school admissions. By doing so, you not only increase your chances of getting in, but also ensure that you choose a university where you can thrive. If you need any support with your medical school choices, then check out this playlist where we go over some of the top universities in the UK to help you decide where you can apply to. You can also apply to FutureDoc's one-on-one -on -one coaching program where you'll get personalized support on how to play to your strengths to maximize your chances of getting an offer. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to FutureDoc's channel and I will see you in the next video.